Uh, this next guy is a guy that I didn't realize I was a fan of until I just saw him. This is a real, uh, wow. comp a real compliment I'm about to pay you <laughs> as an actor. Um, this is Kevin Chapman from the show Person uh, of Interest, uh, which is, is that CBS, is it on? CBS. Okay, yes. CBS. When you walked in here, I thought I thought I knew you. I guaranteed that we hung out together. I said, well, I know you. And then, you know, in this business, you, know, you meet a million people. And he goes, no, nah, we never met. Definitely never met. And I'll tell you why. You're in one of my favorite movies of the last 10 years, and you're so good in it, and the character's so strong, and I've watched it so much that I thought I knew you. Uh, uh, the movie Mystic River. You play one of the Savage Brothers. Right. Okay. Uh, and and you, you, two guys who are like uh, henchmen of Sean Penn's character right. who will do anything for this guy, walk yeah. through a, a brick wall for him, and are just lunatics. Actually, he was my, my brother-in-law is what he was. He was your brother-in-law. In the film, yeah. And, but you're just really family loyalty yeah. and just, you'll, clearly these two guys will do anything, <laughs> including maybe kill a cop or something. <laughs> well, uh, well, we and, took Tim Robbins' character for a ride. I so. know, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you, by the way, so great job in that, Thank man. you. Thank I've you watched that movie over and over. So, uh, again, give me, Give me what it's like to work. First of all, Clint Eastwood directed it. Yeah. Sean Penn. What, what, give me, give me what that's like for an actor at that point. Like, well, I mean, for me, it was really a unique, a unique situation because you know I didn't start acting until I was 37 years old. Right. So I hadn't had a lot of experience prior to okay. getting the gig. You're obviously you know? a Boston guy. Yeah, I grew up in Boston, okay. but I, 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 um, I, you know, I moved to Los Angeles and I studied acting for uh, probably about two years prior to getting that gig. Uh huh. And uh, it was funny. So when we, when I, when I, you know, I heard I got the job and I flew back to Boston. Um, you know, the first thing I did was keep all my old buddies in the neighborhood away <laughs> so they don't get me fired. I go through that too, oh, man. I go, I go through that. And my, I, I love my buddies, but there's some guys where you go, yeah. listen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I grew up 10 yeah. miles outside of New York City. The, oh, yeah. the Stern shows a stone's throw. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, these, I don't want to worry about whackback people showing yeah. up. My buddy, like Tony, yeah. coming oh, over. Yeah. <laughs> all my buddies refer to me as Chappie, you know, so I could say, yeah. hey, yeah. Chappie, you don't mind. We're going to steal this camera when they go inside <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> you know? Did you go up by the South Side? I grew like, up right in the city. I grew up, I lived in Dorchester, is where I grew up. Uh, myself, the Wahlbergs, and uh, another actor by the name of Neil McDonough, uh -huh. we all grew up within about two miles of each other. Wow. Dennis Lehane lived around the corner for me, who wrote Mystic River and, you know, a number of other books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, I lived in South Boston for probably about 15 years, so wow. I got it kind seemed, of a good melting pot. It seems like everybody from Boston who makes it big, that's yeah. such a, a, a town that people have loyalty to, and that says a lot for Boston. Like, Mark Wahlberg seems like the real deal. He seems like a guy who's like a good guy and just stays loyal to his buddies. And what Mark has accomplished just blows it's unre me away. unreal. As Blow a producer I mean, and an actor. The guy's a force. He's one of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, yeah, and, and, and he's good at what he does, man. You know, Mark and I are on the board of directors together at the Boys and Girls Club, at the Dorchester Boys and Girls Club. Oh, and what? every time I see him, he's always like, you know, man, we got to do something together. I'm like, dude, my number hasn't changed, okay? Yeah, that's a call you want to get. <laughs> I don't really quite know that if my agent's telling you I'm a little too busy, but... Uh, like, I'm not going to argue with yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I just signed with a new agency. I'm with um, Jay-Z now. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> Things are looking up. Good, so you're the fullback you well, needed. I, we're, we're looking at buying the Patriots. <laughs> you never know. Hey, you know, Mr. Kraft, move aside. <laughs> so so, so you, you have, what is your history before you start acting? I worked for the mayor of Boston. Okay. So there was a lot of acting there as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you worked for Whitey Bulger. I, <laughs> I worked in logistical capacity for the city of Boston, and Dennis Leary, and a late uh, director by the name of Ted Demi. Dennis Leary, the, another great guy. He was yeah, a Boston guy, yeah. loyal to everybody. And Ted Demi, what a brilliant yeah, director. Ted, yeah. were they, those, were the two, you know, those are the two guys who are, who are responsible for my career in acting, really. Um, okay. And, you know, Dennis, if you, you know, you, of course you know Dennis from the comedy. Sure, movie. I know Dennis. He takes credit for nothing, you know. <laughs> I call him, he's the modern-day Archie bunker He's the, you know yeah. what I mean it's like you know everybody's like hey 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 you know that's yeah. how he talks to everyone right you know? but you know what I love about Dennis is he puts on this big bravado and this big you know kind of uh, guy with an edge but you know what if you you know if somebody's house got burnt down or you know somebody's kid got hit by a car or something you know Dennis would be the first guy to write a check. He'd be the first guy to help him. Unbelievable guy. No, I, mean, I know. I did seven. Yeah. I did seven episodes of Rescue Me. I did seven too. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Say, you know. And yeah. I got to tell you, man, what a generous guy. Oh yeah, great. And he's. Uh, I've done a couple of his charity stand-up gigs since then. And the intro he gives me at these stand-up gigs, he tells tells people I'm a great actor. Yeah. Like, you think I was Brando? <laughs> like, he, I mean, he's, he builds you up. Yeah. And when I went through my time of need, he yeah. was right there, man. And yeah. I just. A, I, and Wahlberg seems like the same kind of guy. 
Like, yeah, you they, know, I just think, you know what it is? If Boston is like a big city with a small town mentality. Right. And that's really, I think, where it, where it, where it comes from. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like everybody is kind of all for one and one for all. You know, it can be a tad cynical at times, too, though. You know, sure. it's like... Oh, it's a double-edged sword, yeah, man. You know, yeah, yeah, Like, you, you know, you... you I remember, mean, like, the first, you know, like, I could win the lottery tomorrow. And, right. And, you know, the guys on the bar would be like, hey, you know <laughs> you know his sister's going out with Joe, who's a custodian at the lottery. I mean, I'm just saying. Exactly. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? like, there's yeah, always something. There's always a fix. He had an end. He had an end. Yeah. <laughs> but, so now, yeah. does someone say, like, you're a, you're, a, you're a guy who could be a good actor? You should try well, it? Well, it was actually Ted Demi and Dennis Leary. Uh, um, Dennis said to me one day, he's like, hey, can you act? Yeah. And I was like, I think so. And you know, you know, Teddy's he's like us. He's right, husky. Right, right, you know? Right, right, right. And Teddy says, uh, he Teddy said, he's husky like me, he's capable of anything. You know? <laughs> and uh, so they gave me the script and I went and read it. And and then I had lunch with him and Dennis the next day, gave them my interpretation of the character. Right. Um, no acting experience, no nothing. But what it was What project just, was this? It was called Monument Ave. Okay. With Billy Crudup and uh uh, it was a great cast. Billy Crudup, Colin Meany, Gene Triplehorn, Fumka Johnson. Wow. Um, it, uh, Martin Sheehan, Dennis. So much talent comes out of Boston, too, man. Comedy and acting. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that's, you know. And uh, writing, yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Right. So um, so that that was the thing that kind of set me on, went on my way. But, you know, of course, you know, you know, you grew up in the inner city. It's like, you know, you don't go down the corner and tell your buddies you want to be an actor. No. You don't go down and tell them you want to be. It's like, you know. Score a touchdown, hit a home run, you're the king of the corner. <laughs> but go down and recite poetry, and the no. guys are looking to give you a wedgie. You when know what I, I mean? I, when I left, no. I was a longshoreman for two years. I didn't oh, go really? to college. I was a longshoreman for two years at the Port of Newark. And that's a job you don't find in a paper. You need to have an in. Yeah, right. And they did me an enormous favor getting me that job. You know, yeah. I, I had to go to summer school to get out of high school. And when I was 22, I was making 75 grand a year unloading orange juice trucks <laughs> and uh, and losing 80 grand a year to the bookies. Yeah, that's right. Another story. <laughs> but when I left that job, I had to tell the guy who got me the job in the mm. union. And I'm leaving to, to get the show business. But now yeah. he goes, and this is exactly what he said to me. He goes, what are you talking about? Like James Conn or something? Yeah. <laughs> I said, if I'm lucky. He goes, yeah. he goes, well, I don't get it. I don't understand what you're doing. Yeah. And almost insulted, I would leave the job and couldn't believe. Now he's like, you know, the nicest guy. He's like, ah, congratulations. But they don't yeah. understand that. Like, yep. what are you talking about? You're going to be an actor. Yeah. No, it, it's unbelievable. And, you know, it, it's funny. I knew when my career was starting to to head on a path of success when I was no longer the brunt of the joke. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd go back to the old bar and the Quiet Man Pub in Salty, and he'd walk in, and he'd be like, hey, De Niro, get us a drink over here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then it became, hey, you know my friend Kevin? You know, and when yeah, I started sure. hearing that, it was like, okay, now I'm on to something. You got some you know? respect. Yeah. So, now, okay, so you find out you're going to work with... Uh, Sean Penn in a, in a role where you're real close with him, where it requires probably close yeah. rehearsals yeah. and everything. Yeah. Clint Eastwood directing, yeah. Kevin Bacon, yeah. Tim Robbins, a cast like crazy, and in a movie that ended up winning Academy Awards. So now, what is the process? How does it start? You start rehearsing early. Like well, you know, with Clint, you don't do that. I mean, first off, I knew that I had the advantage over everyone. Because yeah. I was a Boston guy. Right. That was a real thing. You know what I mean? Well, that's one thing. And but when still we enacting in, that is hard to do. Yeah, still. but I, but you know, yeah. I was still kind of dumb and naive. You know what I mean? Right. With kind of more balls than brains. You know yeah. what I mean? At that point, so I remember sitting down at the table when you know the first night I got there, we're all at the Ritz and everybody's sitting around the table, and Sean could not wait to find out who I was. He the was Ritz like, called him right there in Boston. Was yeah, the, my favorite on Avery Street. Yeah, yeah. And he was, you know, Sean had his had his assistant researching me. He had everybody trying to find out as much as he could. And he told me, and he caught to it later. He's like, I hear the name Kevin Chapman. I'm thinking, this guy don't sound tough. It doesn't right. sound like a, you know. And I sat down, and, and Clint was at the head of the table, and he looks up at me, and he goes, well, kid, how do you feel? <laughs> and I looked at him, and he goes, come on, it's a home game. <laughs> <laughs> You're at Fenway. Yeah. And, and that was it. That kind of set the pace, you know. And we, and like, we hung out every night. That was, you know, it was funny because, um, you know, Kevin Bacon, I still keep in touch with to this day. As a matter of fact, I talk with him today. Um, and, you know, he told me, like, he, he he's always kind of my my beacon in the industry. Like, right. I'll, I'll always bounce things off of him. Because he's a guy that's done it all, and he's he's been at it at an early age. No one's more successful yeah. than Kevin Bacon. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like he said to me, he goes, you know something, chap? He goes, last time I hung out like this, he goes, was when I did Diner. Wow. You know, but I thought, like, every movie was, like, every movie's going to be great. Right. We're going to be eating room service. And, right, right. You right, know, right. You know just yeah, you're starting out high. Take, yeah, 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 taking, yeah. Over, taking over nightclubs and, you know what I mean? And it was like, <laughs> and then I, the next movie I did was was Ladder 49 with Travolta and Joaquin. Right. Which was another phenomenal Huge experience. Huge budget. Yeah, it was you. right where playing firefighters and we're running around Baltimore, you know, lighting stuff on fire and, you know. 
And then the next movie I did, I forget what it was, but it was like, Lobo. that's when it was work. No, yeah. it was, uh, I think it was um, uh, In Good Company with oh, the okay. White Brothers, no, that's right? A big yeah. Deal, yeah. But it was like, it wasn't a hang. Different story. It was like, yeah. it was like putting bumpers on a Buick at General Motors. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> the that's when of, it sucks. And it starts to feel like you're on yeah. an assembly line of like, look, I'm, I'm making a product called and, a movie, and it could yeah. be anything. It could be a tire. I'm yeah. Making. Yeah.